Sagittarius and welcome to your weekly love tarot forecast. This is for the week of January 7th through January 13th, 2019. So Sagittarius, I'm going to pull a card for you and for the other person. Um, I'm just going to say you could fall on this side of the reading or on this side. You just go with which side it feels like is most applying to you. And with this flying out, this is definitely a week where your self-respect is being highlighted. Um, you're going to perhaps be put in positions where, you know, who you're dealing with romantically might ask you to self-sacrifice or compromise beyond something you feel comfortable with. Or, you know, there may be somebody in your life that's not treating you as well as they should. And those behaviors are really going to be highlighted this week where you can't turn away from them. And the reason for that is because Spirit's trying to say that you deserve better than that. And the more that you love and respect yourself, the more others are inclined to love and respect you. So that's just kind of a little bonus message for somebody out there. So let's get into your reading, Sagittarius. All oh, right, over on this side we have the gardener, and over here we have serendipity. So, over here we have somebody who is, you know, really working on something this week themselves, the relationship, um, you know, just their own hobbies, their own projects. There's a lot of energy being focused on one area, one aspect of this person's life. And over here, we have somebody who is really kind of caught up in the magic of everything, maybe even some wishful thinking. But those of you where there's nobody involved in your life, this week could be where there's this interesting reunitement between you and another person, or you run into somebody or you meet somebody new it's a very interesting way that you align and it's as though either you have been doing a lot of uh, self-improvement or they have been doing a lot of self-improvement perhaps both of you and if this is somebody you already know when you align it's like you realize you guys are kind of on the same page spiritually in life emotionally mentally have a lot of the same goals, ideas, things like that, and it might almost surprise you, and you're like, I never thought that you would be so spiritually awakened, or, you know, something like that, but this is about improvement, and, you know, if you are been struggling in your partnership, one of you is really trying to put the work in, and the other one is, like, hoping things are kind of going to magically change. Ugh. And as I was saying that, um, these two cards flew out. So over here um, for this side with the secret gardener, we have, I'm sorry, the gardener, the secret gardener, we have a sacred knowledge. And it says, ancient and sacred knowledge is waiting within the heart of earth, yearning to be discovered. Crystals hold the key, connect energetically with the earth and her crystal realm, healing, love, and abundance result. So this coming out, um, also with that self-respect card that flew out, this definitely sits on the side, okay? And this is a person who is really getting tuned in to themselves, to energy, to the way everything works, and really wants to better themselves, wants a deeper connection with their partner, or wants to attract a partner where there is that beautiful flow and connection. And over here, we have Kuan Yin, and it says, Enjoy the journey of life. Be not afraid of its mysteries. Take a chance and follow your heart. You are guided and protected by Kuan Yin, goddess of mercy, compassion, and transformation. If you have been wavering about proceeding with something that is dear to you, then this is your confirmation just do it. So this being paired up with the serendipity card, this is definitely somebody who is um, 
focused more on the essence of things kind of magically get better rather than you have to put the work and energy and effort into it and over on this side is somebody who really is, gets that concept that you have to put you know the time energy and effort into things so those of you in a current relationship whether committed or just dating somebody there could definitely be like this imbalance of energies where one person is far more serious focused practical and grounded and the other person is you know kind of flighty and fantasy like and imaginative and oh everything works out and it's good to be optimistic and positive and flow in that energy you know because I do see that this person is very flowy it's like I'll just go where the current takes me and this person's more like well, yeah, you go where the current takes you, but you also have the ability to kind of direct that current. So you're more uh, responsible for the things that happen. It's like this person gets that and this person kind of thinks everything's up to destiny and fate and all of that. And this person's like, no, y you create your reality, like your choices, your actions, who you are. That's what's going to come back to you. So. Those of you in, in the current partnership with somebody, the energies are a little unbalanced. They're not in a negative sense, though. I don't feel like um, if there's friction, that it's really nasty negative friction. That's not what I'm picking up here. Now, those of you where we're kind of like just running into somebody, realigning to somebody or meeting somebody new, this is a whole different message. This is kind of masculine and this is very feminine energy so it's a nice beautiful connection and flow between two people so let's pull some more cards and keep adding to this Sagittarius alright you know what spirits like don't look at those yet put those up top that's for the very very end Otherwise, I would have flipped it right now, but nope, Spirit said nope, that's for the very, very end. Like that one here, that one there. All right. Okay, so over here we have Settling. We have Refocus. And we have Admired. And then over on this side we have Healing. Signs. And grief. All right. Yeah. So over here, you know, again, it's the energy just feels a bit more inspired, a bit more focused, a bit more grounded. And with settling, it's like I don't want to settle for less than I deserve anymore. I don't want to settle for anything that's not truly compatible with me even if I do have a, attachments and emotions like I want what is right for me and um, if we're still in, 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 in an existing partnership um, I feel split some of you are like no I'm settling I want to get out of this and others of you are like what will it take to make this work you know what do I need to focus myself on where do I need to work on what do I need to heal and you know the answer to that is truly different for everybody so with this coming out admired you know what speaks to your soul what kind of messages do you hear throughout your day you know repeating things all of that because it's trying to tell you where you truly need to focus and my answer is always like you need to focus on yourself because the more you're in tune with yourself the more your energy is balanced um, the less emotional baggage you're carrying around and rehashing and playing out over and over in your head and you're just kind of in this content space you know things just start working out for you and there's no longer this desire or this need for certain things it just all kind of starts to flow for you and um, you know I could tell you for a while I really was sad that I didn't have a partnership my ex had moved on all of those things and I was sad like why don't I have one why don't I have one and everybody I met just was not a good match and then I just kind of threw my hands and I was single and um, now you know I know that my next partnership is showing up in the summer months of some at some point and it's somebody that I've I already know that's as much information as spirits given me but I will tell you Sagittarius 
I'm like, oh my god, in the summer, like, that's so close. Like, there's so many things I want to do. And, you know, I just feel, those of you who are single, single, if you have good friends, good, strong friend connections, and you are definitely working on self-improvement and learning to love yourself and refusing to settle for something that doesn't fit, like, you're fine. You are on the right path because at this point, like, I have good friends and I enjoy their company. I'm so focused on YouTube and really expanding myself spiritually and my spiritual gift, really taking it to a whole nother level. And I, I'm just so fulfilled and satisfied with the things I've chosen to do with my life that there really isn't room for a romantic partnership in my world. There's just not. And I love that I answer to nobody. I do what I want when I want. I cook when I want. I clean when I want. I sleep when I want. I do what I want and nobody is here to tell me otherwise. My children are grown at this point so I am free and clear. And you know I didn't appreciate that energy for a while but now when it's like oh there is a relationship like I'm not gonna be single forever there is something oh well gosh I didn't realize how much I was enjoying just being single you know doing what I want when I want exploring myself discovering myself being the gardener to figure out who I truly am and some of you singles but also some of you who are involved with somebody else like that is the conclusion that you're coming to or that you need to come to you do not need to settle okay do not let the fear of being alone prevent you from leaving a relationship you know doesn't fit you those of you who are single and have been single for a while you know it, the reason for that is different for each and every one of you. This is a general reading and you would really need a personal reading to dig into your life path, your energies, your blockages because I promise you if you're somebody who's like, oh I've been single 10 or 15 years, there is something you are trying to work on. There are some blocks that you have energetically and you know until you face that you probably are not going to align to that type of relationship that you truly desire. There are people come and go. So, you know, it all starts with you. And, um, the, I just, I know people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. And, you know, tarot is predictive, but it's also to give you that spiritual advice and understanding so you know what to do, so you know how to fix things. You know, if you um, went in to the doctor because your hand was killing you and the doctor was like, hey, your hand's broken, I need to put it in a cast and you need to not move it for six to eight weeks, you would do that. You would comply so that your hand could heal. You wouldn't just say, oh, no, no, doctor, that's stupid. I just don't have time for that. Well, okay, then your hand's going to stay broken and the way it heals is going to be all wrong and funky and you're not going to be able to use it properly. You know, so that's how you have to view your singlehood, your current relationship. It all is truly a matter of you, your energy, what you're willing to accept and settle for, um, the boundaries that you enforce or lack thereof, but mainly 100%. What is the relationship you have with yourself? Because that is the relationship you have with everybody else in your life. All aspects of that. The times that you appreciate yourself and then the times that you beat yourself up and you think you're ugly, fat, unattractive, unworthy, you don't have enough of this, you don't have enough of that, all of those things. And again, I'll give you another example of myself. Um, you know, Dark Night of the Soul took everything that I owned, including my dog, except for my kids, and I had to really rebuild myself. You know, for a while, I didn't have a car, I didn't have the best paying job, I just had to get a job and forget what I could get, and you know, on the resume you can't job hop and all these things, so it was like utter misery for two years, no vehicle, crappy, crappy job, worst environment, like, it was like I was um, back in the 1920s, you know, they were so old school, it was painful, but I see the reason for it now, and I am grateful for it, but I believed that if I had more money, 
if I had a car, if I had a nicer place, if I had X, Y, Z, then I would be ready for a relationship. Well, after I, you know, life moves and I work through and, you know, everything changes and now I have a car and I have a better paying job and I have a nicer place and all these things I thought I needed, I still wasn't ready for a relationship even though my intellect didn't believe that. So the, all the things that you feel that you are lacking or don't have and that's what you need in order to align to a quality person and you'll never have those things so you're just going to be alone or you're never going to have a really good healthy relationship if that's what you believe please get that out of your mind. It's That's not true and I can tell you I'm living proof of that. That is not true. It's what you feel for yourself it's who you are with yourself what you believe you can have for yourself and as you start reaching for higher bigger better things you cannot hope that what you're attached to currently is going to go with you because oftentimes where you're at you know and you're unhappy that's the energy that's the vibration of the two of you together so as one person really starts to self-improve and try to heal and change and elevate the other person is going to be affected if it's you know on their life journey at this point or their consciousness is at a place where it can expand they will naturally um, start treating you better as you treat yourself better and you guys will align and ascend together okay but if they are not in the place for that then as you ascend they have to fall away because they're not a match to what you're truly asking for in your soul even though in your mind you want those things with that person they are not a match and they will never um, be a match in this current construction of your relationship you know the saying sometimes everything has to fall apart to fall together right so the reading that I'm getting here is those of you who are single or you're settling or you're just in a really unhappy situation this week it's really coming to mind you know this is what you've got to do who you've got to be the changes you've got to make in yourself to achieve the happiness that you so desire and again some of you I see where this person this other person involved with you is on board for that okay but they're not as um, practical about things as you are um, or this could be flipped you know you could be on this side and be the more you know mystical I'm gonna go with the flow type of energy but it's just like they're not, the site is not as practical, as grounded. They don't make the connection so much um, to their uh, their uh, energy, their thoughts, things like that. Like, they don't connect the dots. They don't see the signs. And, um, you know, there's some healing that needs to take place inside of them. So, you know, a lot of the friction that you and this person might be going through it might not have so much to do with each other, but more about like other issues, baggage that took place before you came together. There's a lot of healing that needs to be done on this side of the reading. Over here, it's like we're already in that process, okay? So let's um, pull some tarot. I just didn't realize like um, that this would get so in-depth. Like I did not mean this reading to go so deep, but... It is what it is, right? So let's pull some tarot, Sag. Okay, so we have the three of arrows. So there's that like sadness, that incompatibility, that hopelessness type of feeling or, you know, um, feeling of betrayal, things like that first card out which that's we'd rather have it there than the last card out right and then now we have the nine of coins this is being very independent abundant um, having lots of love okay so now we have the king of coins over here so some of you this could involve an earth sign Taurus Virgo Capricorn next out we have the magician I'm just going to pull the cards really and then tell the story. Nice. Look at that. We have the Two of Cups. Now we have the Four of Arrows. 
which is the Four of Swords, um, the Eight of Arrows, Eight of Swords, uh, Two of Swords, and lastly, Prince of Coins. So, Earth energy, very, very strong in your reading, Sagittarius. So, what I'm seeing here is, again, this feeling of, I really want this to work out, like, on both sides if you're involved with somebody you both want this to work whether we are seriously committed or we're just kind of dating each other or trying to reconnect with each other it's like we really want this to work and two of cups so I love that you guys have the same intention on um, you know uh, you both have the same intention but Again, it's somebody's not willing to kind of face reality. Um, doesn't want to take things seriously. Like, oh, we'll get past this. We'll move past this. And the other energy is like, no, we've got to make these changes. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. And with the two of cups at the very center, you know, and the uh, magic right next to it, there is this beautiful connection, Sagittarius. I don't um, disagree with you at all, but it's it's not about the connection. It's about compatibility. And one side is really wanting to elevate and grow and go to the next step and have a more stable, solid connection. And the other side is like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And it's just kind of like, but is, what do you see in this card? Is it as on board? Is it as willing to do the work, put in the energy, the effort, you know, whatever it takes, kind of a lazy energy. And it's like one moment, okay, I'm, I'm on board and I'm being really responsible and really practical. And then, um, you know, the next day, next week, it's kind of a very immature you can't count on them type of energy. It's like it, it fluctuates between a king and a prince, a king and a prince. So one minute we're very insightful and coming across very emotionally mature and sound and solid. And then at some other point, it's like very immature. Um, I'm going to be petty. I'm going to play games. I'm going to, you know, use whatever I can use against you type of energy. And with the Eight of Swords here, it's like we're stuck there. The Two of Swords, we're stuck there. That's the part like we can't get past is this cycle of where things seem like they're on track and all is well. And then boom, it's like back to old issues, old fights, being immature, jealousy, being petty, things like that. But Two of Cups, the connection is real. I understand why it's hard to separate yourself from this if you're recognizing that this probably isn't the best situation for you. Um, now, those of you where this is a, like a reunitement, um, where, you know, we haven't spoken in a while, whether this is an ex or just a missed opportunity or just somebody you used to know that never romance, <clears throat> or this is a new person coming in, I see a very strong connection here. However, there's, uh, we're kind of holding back. It's like it, it, our initial meeting connection reunitement is hot and heavy, strong, solid and sound. But then there's like this distance that follows and it's that going from the king down to the prince energy. And listen, if that's what you're going through, um, if you meet somebody or reconnect and it's like hot and heavy at first and then it, it kind of fizzles or it seems like it fizzles, there's a lot of heartache and grief over on the side that needs addressed, that needs healing. And... Um, that's really what's going on there. Even if you're dating somebody and that's just like it's it was hot and heavy, but then it just seems like totally cold now, yet they don't seem to want to stop seeing you. It's not really about you. It, it has a lot to do with what they're going through um, emotionally. They've got some serious healing. And again, they're more of this like fanciful type of thinking where things just magically work out and 
um, they need to recognize that they've got to put in the energy and effort to heal their emotional baggage and things like that. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna pull some tarot guys. I'm just trying to see how many I'm gonna my hand's gonna grab. Okay, so Ooh, you guys got five. So let's see. I'm gonna do some clarifying with these. Hopefully they don't make the cards go flying all over the place. Okay, so up here, and I go with what's on top. We have the Ten of Cups, and we have the Lovers, and we have the World, and we have the Four of, or I'm sorry, the Five of Wands, and then we have the Two of Wands. So look at this, two of arrows um, being clarified by the two of wands. This is a choice, and um, I feel, again, where one side is mature and trying to really improve and grow, and the other side, it, it says all the right things, and yeah, that's a good idea, but they don't put in the right energies and efforts. It's not to say they don't put in energy and effort, but it's not enough or not the right combination of things it's kind of half-hearted and it, it's down to like we've got to make this choice to either be all in heal our stuff and and work on this relationship or you know this just isn't going to work out we're too um unevenly yoked at this time and maybe it's better that we go separate ways but with magic and the two of cups we have the lovers that is clarifying that so again i do see a very powerful connection between you and another person and um the way where like some of you it's a situation where it's hot and heavy and then it seems to go cold hot and heavy seems to go cold again it has to do with somebody really needing to heal themselves and let the past go let the hope of a um, reconciliation with an ex go or um, really heal themselves from a past relationship if it totally screwed them over and you know caused them a lot of pain a lot of heartache and they're still carrying that around because there's a, a conflict um, with the signs and the grief it, it's like it's time to move on from the past and they know it they're seeing the signs but they are having a hard time releasing, letting go of the past. Now, for some of you, this could be in your existing relationship where there's things that have happened throughout the course of the relationship and now one side is having a really hard time letting all of that go. And they stay because of this beautiful connection, but all the things that happen really hurt them, trauma, and uh, drama inside that they have not healed whether that's who you're dealing with or that's you specifically Sagittarius okay and you singles out there um, I feel like with all of this you guys have to refocus from what has happened in the past it's time like you are getting the signs the world here it's time you know this is the time and cycle of grief is it's ending it's time for that to complete itself okay so let's pull some advice for you guys all right so we have a surrender to play take a break from overthinking a goal do something fun play is a time of recreation and rejuvenation so this is saying pretty much like don't overthink things let I don't want to say like just let things play out because I do see the need to assert yourself and boundaries this week but it's like don't don't take things too serious don't take things too personal um, especially those of you where there's this like it's hot and then it's cold it's hot then it's cold because again that doesn't have anything to do with you. It has to do with whatever that person needs to heal and release. And now those of you in this committed partnership, maybe instead of worrying about your compatibility and all of those things that have been, you know, playing out in your mind, this is a week to just, you know, let that go 
and see what unfolds. If you're going to focus on anything and be serious about it, it's the relationship with yourself, healing, mending, purging, elevating, expanding, whatever it is that you need to do. Ask spirit, what is it that I need to improve in me so that this improves or so that um, the relationships that do come in my life are of much higher energy and connection and all of those things. So surrender to play. You don't have to be controlling and forceful to be empowered and um, assert yourself and your boundaries and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. So we're going to pull one more card and then we'll look at those uh, two cards that I felt were like for the very, very end of this reading. Okay, whoa. So, all right. So the card you got relationships. It says, relationships are just mere images of your own life. How you feel and treat yourself as well as how you react and respond to different situations and people around you. Be aware that every relationship is an opportunity for soul growth. So the fact that this is the card that came out as your advice um, to surrender with play, I really get the sense that... Um, if you've been focusing on like your partner needs to improve, your partner needs to do this, your partner needs to do that in order for the relationship to work, it, you are better served to focus on yourself and see what needs to be healed, released, looked at with yourself, especially with this card coming out, okay? Um, if your partner is trying to tell you that all these various things about you need to change or improve or things like that you need to recognize again that's not about you and perhaps they need to do some soul searching within and figure themselves out before you know they're pointing the finger at you and there's just somebody needs to heal here okay um and in a connected current existing relationship Healing doesn't come from blame. It comes from accountability, and somebody has to start first. And, you know, if it's meant to be, as one person makes that first step, the other person is going to be inclined to follow. If it's not meant to be, as that person makes that first step, the other person is going to make the choice to go on with themselves, right? Okay, so over here, look at that. We have the victim card. And over here, we have unawakened. So, again, if we are in blame game, that has got to end. That is not going to heal. That's not going to connect. That's going to just push further and further away from each other. There's a very beautiful, strong connection here. But somebody um, just feels powerless. Like, they have no say. They have no control. And the truth is they do and the moment that the recognition comes that oh my gosh you know I don't have to put up with this because the whole oh I love them that's why or the kids or financially that that's victim that's victim mentality that's victim mode okay it's energy and if that is the story that you tell yourself it's a wrong story because if you believe that you have to stay for those reasons, then you're going to have to stay. There's nothing that's going to change. There's no outlet, no opportunity because that's your vibration. That's your core belief. But as you um, or the other person, I'm just saying you to make this not confusing, um, decide that I do have a choice. I don't have to stay in this. And as I work on myself, you know, things are just going to naturally start unfolding, naturally start changing, naturally start shifting. Opportunities that I can't even imagine right now in this moment are going to open up for me. And I'm going to trust spirit. I'm just going to do what I got to do. I'm not going to focus on this person being a bad partner, all of these things. Nope, I'm going to focus on myself and what do I need? What's going to make me happy at the end of the day? What changes do I need to make within myself so that I don't feel like a victim, okay? And if you're dealing with somebody um, where they're just really hung up on the past, they have all this emotional baggage, you really like them, you have this great connection, but they are just completely emotionally unavailable, well, they're not very awakened either, okay? They're, they're not. 
and you're probably going to spend your wills and always end up feeling victim victimized by this individual because it, they just, like I said, kind of like, hmm, I'm just going to go where the, you know, flow of life takes me with very little regard to how their energy and actions affect other people, okay? And lastly, those of you where this is kind of a, a reconnection, um, I feel whatever was the issue in the past, like I said, it's different now. We were unawakened before. We were a victim before. There could be codependency issues, a lot of emotional healing and purging and awakening that had to take place. And um, the universe realigns you now because you both have you know, come to that juncture. Now, this is a general reading. So if there is somebody that kind of realigns from your past this week that you always thought, oh my God, oh my God, um, if they show up and they're just kind of like a complete unawakened dope, then yeah, you're going to realize, okay, yeah, that would be settling for that person. I So they're coming back for a, a second chance or they're coming back for the universe to show you that that was no loss and that was not the one that got away. Okay, so Sagittarius, those are your messages. I'm wishing you all the best. Take care.